Hi, my name is Chris, aka The Philosopher's Games, and welcome to my The Lord of the Rings Gollum Let's Play, which my community has voted for. So here it is. Of course, my channel focuses on Tolkien's books, writings, and fantastic lore. I also want to do the same in context with the Gollum game. So compare what we see in the game, see if we find references or differences to what Tolkien actually wrote. I don't do Let's Plays on this channel, so this is kind of a premiere for me, and I hope it's interesting for people. Let me know in the comments, of course. Before we start, shout outs to the artists who allowed me to use their fantastic artworks. I link the artists I use in the description because sometimes I have to explain something and then maybe can show you an image or so. Then, of course, I try to pronounce names as Tolkien described it, so that means a lot of trilled R's in case you wonder. But enough talking, let us start. So yeah, we start in a cave and Gollum does his classic Gollum things. Little riddle here. I don't recognize the riddle. The only thing I recognized here in this uh, particular section is he talks about, uh, I think, rose and lily, roses and lilies. And in the manuscript of The Hobbit, so before it was published, Tolkien the original manuscript that was then changed further into the publication version. And there we find a section where he mentions lilies and roses, where they basically Gandalf introduces himself to um, Bilbo. And Bilbo says, oh yeah, Gandalf, I heard this name. Isn't he known for this splendid firework? I remember those from the old days. And then he compares them to roses and lilies that I could find. There are also some Roses and Lilies references in the Adventures of Tom Bombadil, but overall I don't recognize it here. Here we now jump to Mirkwood and he's in a cell. So he's in Thranduil's realm in a prison cell, like the dwarves were in The Hobbit as well. We may you... And he was brought here by Aragorn. That is what we not see in the game. And we see the silhouette of Gandalf already. What's interesting, the Elven King, uh, the, the Thranduil is here called Elven King, because in The Hobbit, originally, the character Thranduil did not exist yet. He was invented much later for The Lord of the Rings, and he was only called in The Hobbit Elven King. Complicated topic. And even in the second edition of The Hobbit, he's also still just the Elven King. I think it is a cool reference in a way, because it makes sense that from Gollum's perspective, he's just the Elven King. Also, I should hint at that they don't have the license for the Peter Jackson trilogy. So they have to come up with own designs and so on. I think they did a fairly good job because that's very difficult to do. Especially when the Peter Jackson films are so beloved. And yeah, now Gandalf is kind of trying to get information out of him and out of Gollum. And Gollum, of course, often lies and Gandalf has to puzzle the pieces together. Here we hear him kind of cough almost his name, and that's how also this name Gollum came to be. He coughs as Gollum, I can't make this, but that's, that's how the name came to be. It's interesting uh, to see that they also added this. Pretty cool. Here we are at Bilbo Baggins, which Gollum is searching for. When Bilbo meets Gollum first, 60 years ago, so we also get a time frame here. This is in the year 3017. Because that is when Aragorn brings Gollum to Thranduil's realm, and there he is questioned by uh, Gandalf. Yeah, following. <laughs> What Tolkien wrote. They only have the license interesting for the book, what for the Lord of the Rings. It's kind of left your home in the, the reason why things are as they are. Down the hills, always hiding from the moon. Yeah, so when he lost the one ring you to Bilbo Baggins, and this is correct, Gollum left three years after that the Misty Mountains and went as far as Dale, so to Erebor, to the Lonely Mountain. And there on the streets he heard about the Shire must have and that Bilbo Baggins is from the Shire. 
So he had to now figure out where the Shire is. When they, when Bilbo met him, as said, Bilbo only introduced himself as Bilbo Baggins, but not where he's from. And then, only with this information, when he was captured by Sauron, he could reveal, as we see, for example, in the Lord of the Rings films, at, in the prologue, he reveals Baggins and Shire to Sauron. And Sauron also doesn't know where the Shire is, so he sends his Nazgul to find that. Very well. And here we have Smeagol. Now, let us start here we see Mordor, mountains of Kiris Ungol. So Mordor is in the southeast of this section of Middle-earth, east of Gondor, in the year 3012 in the Third Age. The, the Hobbit plays 2941. So we have and the Lord of the Rings mainly plays 3018, 3019. So we have kind of an idea when we are here in the timeline. Kiris Ungol is the spider cleft. That's where Shelob lives, and we know the Tower of Kiris Ungol from Lord of the Rings, from the books, but also from the third film. And we see our little bird friend here. If you look close, it has red eyes, so like the like Sauron's red eye. And uh, Sauron had uh, references and hints in the books that there were beasts and like uh, some kinds of animals also in the service of Sauron spying for him. For Saruman it was kind of the same, though he made often use of um, the services of Radagast, who was much closer to nature than Saruman, and had many friends among the birds and beasts of the world. He does his cuffing again, his name cuffing. Smeagol, interesting detail, um, how it's pronounced. Tolkien himself pronounced it Smeagol in a reading, as far as I know. I think there might have been a reading where I also said Smeago. If I'm from Germany, for example, we also call him, call him um, Smeagol because um, that's how in German you would pronounce the name when you read it. However, the name is as like Old English roots, and if you see it as an Old English name, which is hard to tell if it is, then you would pronounce it, of course, Old English, and in Old English the name is pronounced Smeago. So with a so-called voiced vela fricative. It's a bit tough for me to make. Sounds a bit Dutch in a way. Smeachol. And up. And up again. I'm not good with the fricative though. <laughs> or this particular one. Yeah, here we have a lot of platforming in the case. It's not that interesting, so I'm a bit sorry that my excitement isn't kicking through the roof here, right? of shadow that is where you are hiding i kind of also got used to the voice actor here from Gollum. i think it, it's really tough like of course they can't have andy circus and have the um lord of the rings peter jackson films Gollum in this style so it's a really tough hill to climb if you don't have access to that and cats can't use this and have to find somebody else going into this role. He, of course, is, tries to be relatively close to how, I guess, Andy Serkis portrayed Gollum, but of course he's not Andy Serkis. Little invisible wall thing here. Try to walk up here, doesn't work. I have to jump and we can look. We see the moon in the background. I kind of like really the background here. It really gives the feeling of this is an unpleasant place in Mordor, you don't want to be here. Looks mysterious as well, pretty cool. And it says Shadow Mountain, that's the translation. If you look on the map, um, Efelduath is the elvish name. Ered Lithui is the ash mountains that are, they are in the north, the Shadow Mountains are more to the western and south borders of Mordor. And a little bit of platforming here. It tries to teach us how to drop down. Pretty standard. Here we see a, a so-called fell beast. Fell beast is not the official term of it. 
they don't have a name. They sometimes called winged steeds, fell beasts. That's the description of what they are. But it's not like that's their name. They're not written in capital letters if you read fell beasts in um in the Lord of the Rings book, so Tolkien never gave them a, a name. Just fans call them usually fell beasts or something like that. And they have a beak in the books. No feathers. So here I kind of like the depiction. That it seems closer to the books than the Peter Jackson depiction of the fell beasts. Although we see some weird light shadow glitch on Gollum's head, which I think I did not have in the first version. Maybe I had it, I forgot. It, Gollum tells us now his tragic story. He is a Stur hobbit. His grandmother is the matriarch of the Sturs. And when he found the ring, he used it to spy on his family and friends and people. And people didn't like that. And then he, I don't know, kind of shared secrets and so on. And he caused a lot of trouble as a result, potentially also because he was under the influence of the One Ring, which is like an, an evil object with uh, Sauron's will and power in it. And where Sauron is, there's evil. And he was kicked out by his family, was then alone and then de yeah, degenerated into Gollum, so to say. Very tragic. I really like how Peter Jackson portrayed this in the in at the beginning of Return of the King. How did you find it? Your precious. <laughs> Andy Serkis also nails this. There's this short way he looks at this one ring, you know, and you see it has not worked well out well for for poor Smeagol. So yeah, he is now in Kiris Ungol in the spider cleft where Shilob lives and it's looking, we can look a little bit at these objects and get learn a little bit about his past. <laughs> we see his vicious side at times, here we see like kind of a, I don't know what you call this, an alt, a spider altar or something like this. Good old Shelob, the daughter of Ungoliant. Ungoliant was like a very powerful entity that took the shape of a giant spider. And got, uh, she, she, she later bred with lesser spiders, I think something like this is somewhere described in, uh, described in the Silmarillion. And then Shelob was one of her offspring that survived the end of Beleriand, the complicated story, the end of the First Age. The section of Middle-earth was in the, was the west coast and was sunk into the ocean and completely destroyed after the War of Ra's, the final, the final battle in the First Age. Very epic battle and she somehow survived this. Ungoliant went to the, her mother to the south continent and legends are she devoured herself there. I always imagine Ungoliant as a spirit being that took the sh shape of a spider, more like a kind of a black hole that swallows everything and is always hungry. Shelob is, I think, far less powerful than Ungoliant and potentially really just a big spider with maybe some powerful evil spirit in it. I could imagine that Shelob maybe has some telepathic abilities because it's not clear how she communicated with Gollum, how they made a deal. We can also read that Gollum met her in the year 2980 in Appendix B and he was captured in Mordor 2000, uh, 3009. Lord of the Rings plays 3018 and 19 mainly and Gollum was captured 3017 by Aragorn and brought to Thranduil's realm where he was interrogated by Gandalf as we have seen before. I like kind of that he's still talking to Gandalf and they're exchanging information and Gandalf tries to piece together and he's consistently kind of lying to Gandalf here. No, nobody saw us. We were in an ore cave and so on. That leaves out a lot of details. He, he tells him not what we see here, basically. This is basically the memory, uh, that's how I interpret it, of Gollum. And he only reveals very little to actually uh, 
Gandalf. The bird, yeah, I said at the beginning, I think as I mentioned it. It makes, it's very plausible that Sauron has spies. We can read about the battle of the last alliance or before the battle of the last alliance started that at this day, basically the peoples of Middle-earth or everything in Middle-earth was split one part on, on the Sauron side, one part on the side of the last alliance. Like even beasts and birds or something like this, it's described. Uh, here it like of course Shilop has to eat, so she often eats maybe some orcs here and there. Sauron also used this to um, to basically execute prisoners to basically say yeah send her to Shilop and then she has something to eat. That's a section where he where Sauron describes her as as her cat kind of, which is a fascinating reference because in very early versions there was a character that had a similar role distantly to Sauron and that was a giant cat, the Prince of Cats. But it's Book of Lost Tales stuff. This character is not identical with Sauron though. Later this character was changed and replaced with a character with like a character called Thu. He was also like a necromancer and then this changed again and so on and Sauron was created at some point as one of the big, uh, as, as a Dark Lord of, and basically successor of Morgoth, the first Dark Lord. In this context, Mordor and the first Dark Lord Morgoth, who was extremely powerful, like the master of Sauron once, Morgoth um, created Mount Doom. If he also created the foundations and so on of Mordor itself, it's hard to tell, but if the first Dark Lord creates something, you can see it's, it must be terrible terrible place and Sauron basically later took this as his home base so to say and used Mount Doom to create the one ring and so on we know the story in detail so here we have met our first orcs and now here we have a little section I have to admit I don't know how the game wants me to source this section here precisely so when I played this here the first time, I just ran through and that's what I'm going to try here again. Of course I get stuck in an invisible wall thing here. But it works with cutscene. <laughs> Animations are a bit clunky, but whatever. I said, I don't want to talk too much about technical stuff here because, yeah, let's see. Check my review. The game has not got favorable reviews here. I didn't hold on to the to the wall there. I will let go. Tried to climb down fast. Didn't work. Game often, like platforming, is really clunky, unfortunately, in this game. It feels very outdated and has some strange design decisions, in my opinion. Or too many of those. I'm kind of confused where to go. <laughs> no, it's the other side. Here it is. Some area transition stutters. I have to say when I initially played this, I had least less uh, stutters than this time here. And we still hunt the bird. Yeah, that Gollum eats um, birds and so on is not too unusual. A Gollum, as I said, is an, is an evil entity as well. It's, it's very tragic, but he's also a poor little evil thing. Hard to describe it differently. Like, we can read about them, uh, about Gollum. Um, the Woodman said that there was some new terror abroad, a ghost that drank blood. It climbed trees to find nests. It crept into holes to find the young. It slipped through windows to find cradles. So a very disturbing description here of, of, of Gollum. And this was while he was like in Mirkwood and creeping around there. But it's two personalities thing. I think it's very interesting. 
Yeah, the cute little bug. Maybe referencing like when Frodo and Sam in Mordor, there was a mountain ridge called Morgai, I think it's called. And there there were also these kind of flies. Maybe this is a reference to those, in my assumption at least. I like how sometimes his Gollum personality is the more reasonable one. While well, Smeagol is a dreamer. And we see like the mechanic that he Gollum becomes now black and has like um, glowing white eyes. That means when the enemies don't know that I'm there, I'm invisible, even if they look in my direction. See, now I get black again. So yeah. The ladyship. So yeah, this these sections are a bit boring in my opinion. It's just you just have to wait till they are there, till they reach a certain point, and you can then you can sneak behind them, get into the brush. I feel like it's not that interesting. Not gonna lie. The problem is, it wouldn't be no problem at all if this would be just one time in the game, but it's uh, multiple sections like these, they're not getting any better. Sometimes you get some interesting world information dialogue in the meantime. Yeah, only Scar was just an accident. That, there are no torture marks or anything. No, no. She, so Gollum could help, could get help by from Shelob with his for dealing with the orcs. Shriekers, of course, the Nazgul, the Ring Race. Now we just climb past them. You see the bar at the top we can't get out of range, else we instantly fail. So we want to stick close to them. Not that difficult, to be honest. And now we come to, like, yeah, you see spider webs. So spider warning. <laughs> For those with arachnophobia. Not sure what the orcs are even doing here. Yeah, yeah I usually do the f a mistake, yeah. I did not hold the button and instant I was discovered instant fail we start the last checkpoint I have to hold the triangle in my case or the Y button I just clicked it once because in mo lo most other games these days you just have to press once and then you get the takedown animation of course here they wanted to make it I guess a little bit like a fight you have to strangle him from behind. The animation doesn't really give that away too much, to be honest. Maybe a little bit. So you have to hold it to make it more tense and it taking longer. So I think it kind of makes sense. But it's just unusual. Yes. Yeah, there's stones and we get this stone throwing mechanic. Just stack up with stones. What's actually interesting in this section that the orc, orc has trouble seeing in the dark maybe. But orcs don't have trouble seeing in the dark. They have actually very good night vision. As Tolkien describes in his books. And here we see the back of Shelob. She looks a bit strange here, I feel like the back, but of course I have to 
take a different design. Maybe make it also design her in a way that she doesn't trigger arachnophobia too much. She often looks a little bit more like a zirkling, I feel. A spider zirkling from like Starcraft or so. I think they did a very similar thing in Shadow of War, for example, as well. Yeah, here we see Mount Doom and Barad Dur, which means the Dark Tower. Mount Doom. The elvish name is Orodruin, or uh, Amon Amarth in uh, Sindarin, which is the actual translation of Mount Doom. Amon Amarth, that is. Orodruin is also Sindarin. Burning Mountain, it means, it seems. Okay, just double checked it. There's also a metal band called Amon Amarth. Now we have this mini game where Gollum has to convince himself or his other side of the decision he wants to make. Convince Gollum that there's no danger. Beetle is harmless. I tried some different sections in my first playthrough on the uh, YouTube live stream where I did my f gave, gave you my first impressions of the game. Just tried to mix it up a little bit so you can fail. Yes, it's a spy. It looks funny. <laughs> it looks funny. funny things aren't bad. Just another disguise. Birds, orcs, bugs, all false. Don't let them tell on us. Smash it. Well, Smash we lost the argument. So Gollum has won the argument and now we have to eat the bug. Oh no, Mr. Buck. Not a very meaningful decision. It's interesting to see. I'm not sure if there's a, there's a second cutscene. I don't think so. I think both cutscenes, like the outcome is always the same. Here in this case. There are different outcomes though at times. And here we see the more beak like um, head design, which I said I like. That's closer to the books. Run, Gollum! Now we come to the section. Like this is always it was a mysterium. It's not described how Gollum was actually captured by Sauron or Sauron's servants. In the Appendix B, it's just said he's captured by Sauron, or potentially personally. Sauron at this time also has a physical form. I would. I'm pretty. Sh no, I'm not sure if there's a mention where, uh, since when he has a physical form back bit, but usually uh, Sauron tries to get one. He lost it a few times. They also go with the There's a Burning Eye Above Baradur as the Peter Jackson film, so I said that's the, the oh, excuse me. The red eye detail is more metaphorical, in my opinion, in the books, though there are some references here and it depends on visions and so on, but it's, it's, not, it's not like it's completely off, but it's also not that clear. And this thing here now wants us to use the Gollum intuition, as it's called, the Gollum vision. It often shows us basically the way where to go. Oh, we can't get up here. As you can see here, we see the path where the game wants us to go. But it's it's a mist it's a mystery how he got caught and I have to admit this 
I'm not sure if you're a huge fan of um, how this is here now portrayed, how Gollum is caught, because it's not that interesting, if that makes sense. Also, the stamina bar with few runs just. You're out of stamina far too much. The scream is now different. Here we see more of the ring race. The scream is not that interesting. Now we are kind of surrounded by them. I can always spoil that. Yeah, there's no way to escape them. You just get caught at some point. You just get closer and closer. Maybe there is a way and I didn't know. Maybe you can sequence break this somehow. Music is pretty good in this game, though, I have to admit. Like, the composer definitely did a really good job. But yeah, this is even in Kiris Ungol, in the in the mountains and so on, at the borders of Mordor. And he was already here, got acquainted with Shilob, like I said, 2980. In 3009, he was captured by Sauron. Then 3017... <laughs> Uh, found by Aragorn, uh, released by Sauron. There was a certain intent that Sauron had with him because he knew he was like an evil creature and he would potentially also try to find the ring and he could just follow him and then also, as a result, find the ring. That was the intention of Sauron in the story. And as a result, I find the idea more interesting that he is captured deeper into Mordor for whatever reason he even goes there. But it, it can't be re a reasonable decision to go there because he wanted to do something else. It has to do with Sauron basically f putting his will and strength towards summoning and bringing all the evil creatures to Mordor and having them there. They brought you to him. And then he wants to form armies and make plots and so on and try to also bring the One Ring there. And here we see the mentioned scene. A bit of black speech which is very cool. I only know that Nazg is the word for ring in black speech. Other than that, my black speech is not very great. So he knows. That Gandalf can use his stuff and make it glow is also in the books. It's not an invention by Peter Jackson or this here. That's possible. Kind of uses the light. Here we see again Barad Dur, the Dark Tower. And he's brought there for um, slave labor, I would assume, because his armies need to need to be bred. They need food. Though the food is generally potentially generated. Crown, uh, there's a section in Mordor called uh, Nurn. That's the Sea of Nurnen, and that was one of the few fertile places in Mordor. And slave were living there later after Lord of the Rings Aragorn give, set those slaves free and gives them this land to live on. But they worked there. There's even the story in, or a hint in one of Tolkien's letters where one of the end, or the end wives were kind of captured by Sauron. It's a suggestion by Tolkien how, if this is true in the world or not, is debatable. But Tolkien suggests that maybe he captured some end wives because the lands where they lived were bo burned down so they could have also just burned and died and then this land became known as a brown lands and potentially captured some and put them to northern to um, grow food for his armies it's an interesting comment in one of the letters for which letter it was though and yes it makes a lot of sense that we see the humans as slaves here in in Mordor, that is basically how this works. What these slaves are doing here exactly, 
I couldn't really fully find out, I have to admit. I guess mining, getting ores and so on. That should be their main purpose. But yeah, the food for armies and stuff, potentially not grown here, but elsewhere. And they were farming slaves, so to say. I mean, Mordor is a big land, you have a lot of space there to put your slaves to labor and use. So Sauron potentially thought. And yeah, yeah, now it's the time where Gollum is captured. As said, he was captured 3009 and released 3017. So that is round about eight years. And what happens in those eight years, we have no idea, like that is not really described. We just know he gets captured at some point, 3009. And then he's later released, and in the meantime he's tortured. I assume that Sauron tortured him relatively early to get the information and then just put him there, and later decided to set him free. That maybe orcs who didn't behave well or so could also be slaves. I'm not sure if there's a reference for that, to be honest, but there were... Well, I think potentially because some orcs looked down to others, and they had also some um, terms for those. I think Snaga, um, I think means slave. Here we see an item behind the door. I know we can get this later, but let's check it still. We swear. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I went to the trigger point and just ended the dialogue. I should have stayed there a moment longer and listened. That was my mistake here. And now we are brought somewhere. I feel I kind of like how they captured the atmosphere. Like, this is a place you don't want to be. The frail man seems to be like our. the guy who helps us a little bit. Too ugly for either of them. <laughs> yes, my king is interesting. I'm wondering why the sound is. what generates the sound here. This scene here is also kind of nasty. It's like the orcs, orcs spit from above down on you. Very unpleasant, I have to admit. A bit gross, but yeah, it definitely shows how little worth your life is in this particular place here. Just get, try not to get hit. <laughs> Orcs are supposed to speak black speech. Of what is wrong with his beard? <laughs> that's just, ah oh man, this game. So unfortunate. But yeah, orcs should speak black speech, but they don't like the black speech as much. Rough, difficult, so orcs often have their own tribe languages. On sometimes a mixture of Westron and some other stuff, so it's kind of interesting that we see a lot of different languages here. Of course, the officials of Sauron might speak black speech, like this Beastmaster we have seen a moment ago. And here we see like these beasts that we're talking about, uh, like um, paintings on the wall, which I find a bit strange to be honest, but. Like, who painted this? Orcs? Slaves in their free time, it's kind of strange, but it still gives a certain feeling um, to this particular section. Of course, I know what comes next. Um, it is first things first. The slaves chase the cattle. The cattle chases the slaves. You are the bait. You are the bait. Okay. 
lure the animal into the pen and then quickly shut the gate. Those beasts love to break the levers. That's why there is another one on top. Now down on the other side. Carefully. It's on top because they like to break it. Okay. That's it. Not because, so I have to do some climbing stuff. Hello. The beast is kind of... Oops. <laughs> kind of not noticing us. Doesn't pay attention much. And this now we have to do. Just bring the cattle into the pen. Pull the lever. Cutscene. And that's it. I think these beasts are like invented. There's potentially no real reference for that. At least in context of Mordor for them. If so, I don't recognize it. These ones are bulls, so I wouldn't trust the fences to stop them. If they get too close, try getting to higher ground. I think we got teleported down here. At least we have nice reflections in the water. And we have to run. <laughs> well, that was a bug. <laughs> you jump a little bit too early, you often get kind of stuck on those things, which I find very strange. Adds to the clunky feeling of the game, unfortunately. And up to the lever we go. The problem with these sections is it's not interesting. I have to admit, like especially if you do this like a second time, like here, you think to yourself, "Oh God, let's just be done with it fast." When does the interesting part of the game finally start? And this is a big problem of the game. It doesn't. They want me to keep an eye on you. Their newest scheme to humiliate. I suppose. Next, the mines. Dry, dry, dry. Snack up, move. Interestingly, dry means three in German. <laughs> Spelled with E I, not with A I, though. <laughs> Just try out if I can jump on this. We can. Ouch. <laughs> it's a head. And next section. Uh, now we have to find uh, ID tags of slaves that didn't report back. So they have get eat their ID cards. Oh, what's it saying, precious? Is it asking you riddles? Don't listen to her. There's a reason she's in a cage. For what reason? She's a witch. Well, that's the rumor. I could never figure out if we can do... If there's more to um, her. Is it a witch, precious? Does it know curses? Or riddles, perhaps? I like to say it's consistently put on this riddle reference here. It's Miguel often sings about his past. He has his riddles and songs and so on. He tries to remember those. And it's an interesting detail because Gandalf's conclusion why he is the Stur Hobbit and so on, and wh what relation he might have to others, is that some of the riddles he uses and knows are similar to the riddles that Bilbo knew. Because the hobbits in the Shire are related, at least in parts, to the Stur hobbits as well, and some of the culture and traditions of them transported there. And that's what I really like about Tolkien's world building, that this consistently carries over into later generations and is referenced. And Tolkien is so good at this. And what does a good slave do? Oh, a good slave that doesn't know the words. He learns. Maybe you should run, little slave. 
We want to be done before the third horn, don't we? Third horn, okay. I'm more a fan of second breakfast, but third horn it is here. Please wait. The Freeman must help us. Uh. What was that? The bridge. Oh, come on. They want you to search the tunnels for dead workers. Dead? Eight didn't report back yesterday. Find their bodies, collect their numbers as quick as you can. Numbers? Yes, their tunnels. Like the one they gave you. Eight. eight. Awesome. Right. Maybe we see them doing. Eight bodies, eight numbers. Um, like hard. mining stuff, I assume. Maybe there's some minerals and ores or so that they get here. It kind of makes sense, I guess. Was like a huge industrial complex in Mordor, I guess, to create this massive amount of armies that Sauron needs. So there needs to be infrastructure for this. I like how these two NPCs react to us. A tasty worm. But that golem isn't really picky. I also like the idea that, like, in a lot of ways, golem, like, for other p people, this place is like hell in a way, but you're eating some juicy worms here and there. It's dark and it's warm. That's kind of how golem likes it in a way, I guess. I mean, it could be a little bit better, so it's even for golem, it's not great. Don't get me wrong here, but I think he can deal with this environment much better than um, most others can simply because he was so long with the ring already. He was like transformed into yeah, Gollum. Also some weird... Like if, if an object moves and your character stands on it, it often can have weird effects on the character like him jittering a little bit. So if you see a game where this is not the case, oh, almost went down again because it doesn't stop at top, just goes down. Sound design overall, I think it's pretty decent. Okay, <laughs> should have not went through this cloud there. And another tag. Like I said, it's not that interesting, not much to, to tell here. I don't imagine that in Tolkien's vision was that Gollum crawls through Barad-dur's depths and collects ID tags of dead slaves. It was also not my expectation when I heard about this uh, game. But these weird blind jumps almost missed this jump. Not Camera work's not great here. But this is not what I want to see. I'm kind of okay with this when it comes to the idea of it's just at the beginning it's the introduction to basically introduce okay this place is terrible <laughs> also yeah some glitchy standing here but it's not too unusual so i won't complain about this but this here looks like you can go through it but i remember also trying it the last time it doesn't work unfortunately but it's simply, you know, if, if I would know, it's the only time you do this busy work, like the slave labor, finding ID tags, I don't know, doing, interacting with some bees and bring them into pens or whatever it's called. Okay, but it just never stops. Like the Mordor section is six chapters in this game. It's a lot. Oh, we had an awesome little glitch. So just try the jumping here. This wall running here in the game is just so terrible. I, I said this in my review as well. Like, it's every time you run through what a dead end, which means you die and load from the last checkpoint, which often can cost you a little bit of progress, or quite a bit of progress. Though, to be fair, the checkpoints are set very generously in this game. However, um, you just run through what a dead end and hope that the wall run interaction starts. If not, you're just dead. And that's terrible. Absolutely terrible. Terrible game design. Just make Gollum jump against the wall and activate like in Jedi Survivor. It just gives you the feeling of having much more control about the wall running. 
I don't think it's their game design decision to make the player hold on um, the breath every time he does a wall run. I think I think it's a wall jump. I mean wall running. Okay. It's kind of impressive that we can move here barefoot. And I unfortunately lose a little bit of uh, orientation here. And not play this very well, I have to admit. I'm sorry for that. I don't know where to go. <laughs> Even though I played this here already, I, I can't remember. And I just want to be gone, done with it. Because now we are sitting here and having a good chat, but just playing this alone for a second time is just not that interesting. I can, I can tell you that. Especially if you're like me, an absolute idiot and don't find the way. So now we climb all the way back. Chris, congratulations. You did very well. I have to go down there and then it must be there on the down level. I have to do a jump I didn't see or so. I'm j so I think you have to, yeah, from here to this other side, you have to jump and there's there are the last two tags or so. Was well, that three tags? I forgot how many we are in here, but Okay, now it's two more tags. One more. <laughs> it, it definitely looks hot, I have to admit. I don't want to um, switch places with Gollum here. Luckily, we got teleported back. We don't have to climb all the way back. That's good. Sending the weak up to the tower. Now here we learn about this. The weak and sick are sent up in the tower in this cage, and then something happens to them, and you will never see them again. It didn't even fight. They never do. Now. If we try to go there, no, of course, it teleports us back. Well, it's not that interesting either. Now we have a slow walk. I'm not sure if you can sprint here. But sometimes you are just forced to walk and then... Now, here we get a little bit of exposition. Well, it has something to do with light. They never come back. And that's basically it. Sitting here, kind of warm here. And you? Eight. All eight. Ugly and <laughs> slow. I would milk you for blood if you had any. Listen. He kind of like his humor. <laughs> it's 
So now we turn to the cell. So it's here yeah, we can sprint again. And here is where you can get this item. And it's a spoon. We can use that. We can use this for all things. Maybe a, a Bilbo reference. Yes, a uh, dispute going on with um, Lobelia Sequel Baggins about spoons. <laughs> It seems like an orc died. Or a slave. Yes, that's oh, so I think it's a slave, right, right? Yeah, it's just a slave, not an orc. And she's some kind of noble or so, so it seems like she has some saying here. She also said, like, um, yeah, the eye ceases and so on. That's a very small cell, to be fair. Our cell is very comfy and big in comparison. Look at this. And we can end the day. I could have talked to them. See the first impressions video if you want to see the dialogue there. There was also another character here in this cell was sick and now he's gone. He's referenced here. I forgot to s check out for him last time. Yeah. I said, this is the second time I play this, so my attention to detail sometimes is a bit diminished. I've seen people sit there all night, staring out that window, hatching out plans, good, clever plans, all dead and gone. What are you looking at? The bridge? The gate? Ah, oh, yes. That beautiful gate. Leads straight out of Lugborth, they say. Lugborth is, um, Opening to the, the name for Baradur. The orcs invitation. call it that. Huh? I assume the black speech, huh? a black speech name. Who lives in the tower? The master of the black pits. A sorcerer. But the orcs just call him... I like that they call him Sorcerer here, not Withered. He has a distinctive difference between these two terms in Tolkien's universe. Like the dark forces have sorcerers. And the wizards, because it includes the word wise, is reserved for Gandalf, Saruman, though Saruman is maybe a special case here. Great collection of maps, he told me, stored somewhere in the horrors of Grond. Was the hammer of Morgos, the, the the mace he used, for example, um, to fight a Fingolfin in single combat. And of course, the um, big ram we also see. We, we read about in the Lord of the Rings and see in the Peter Jackson film is also called Grond. And in this hall it seems to be where it's built. And this brings us to day two in Gollum's life in Baradur. And what he will experience here that we will see next episode. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked my pilot episode for my Gollum Let's Play and had a good time here. The game is unfortunately not really recommendable, it has a lot of issues, it feels very outdated, the platforming is clunky, it's often not that interesting, but I think explaining the backgrounds, the lore and references and also see if there are differences towards Tolkien's writings is interesting and might add value for some people interested in this game. Let me know if I kind of succeeded with this in the comments and of course press the like button. You can also ask questions in the comments, law questions, or just visit some of my law Q&A live streams here on the channel where I also answer all kinds of questions as good as I can. So you can do this as well. If you want to get notified about the next episode, a set or a live stream, press the subscribe button and potentially also the annoying bell. We are now in the months of my 10th channel anniversary, so that's kind of special for me as well. Huge shout outs to all the people who supported me over the years, to the artists and all the people who help out here in the community and so on, on the Discord and on Twitch, the moderators. Thank you so much for all your help. And I would say thank you again for watching. See you people next time. Goodbye.